You may or may not have heard of the Godot game engine. You might be wondering whether it's worth switching over to it or using it to learn to make games. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the existing Godot 2 engine, which is very good already for 2D games. And then we'll talk about the upcoming new features in Godot 3. Godot is an open source, multi-platform game engine that's developed by the community for the community. It's feature-packed, it has plenty of things you'd see in something like Unity or GameMaker, a fully-fledged editor to start with that you can extend with code, you can create plugins. It's available on Windows, Mac and Linux. It can export games for desktop platforms for the web and HTML5, but also Android, iOS, mobile phones and consoles. You probably know Unity, it's one of the most popular game engines out there. You've probably used it yourself. You might be wondering between Unity and Godot, which one should you go with? Which one wins? Well, they both have big advantages. Unity has excellent documentation, an entity component based system, so it's easy to compose objects together. It has a huge store where, where you can buy code that's been made by other users or even visual assets. It has the biggest user base, so if you're asking yourself some question, chances are it's already been answered out there. And it has plenty of features, especially for 3D. Now, Godot, on the other hand, has dedicated 2D and 3D rendering engines. So when you are working in a 2D game project, you can work with pixels. This means if you make a 2D game, your tools are optimized for the 2D workflow, but also in terms of performances. Godot embraces object-oriented design principles. It has a flexible scene system where you place nodes inside of a tree and every one of the script has to extend one of the base classes provided to you. There are many of them that offer a ton of built-in functionality. You have a built-in reference. You can search the help anytime and find all the methods and the classes at your disposal. The Godot engine itself is lightweight. It's about 20 megabytes. It Everything's inside of it, including the code editor. All of the file formats are source control friendly. And on top of that, you have full access to the source code to extend the engine, to add C++ modules and much more as we'll see in a moment. So who wins? Well, both, neither, or it depends. There's no silver bullet when it comes to game engines. You have to pick the one that works for you. And to do that, I've said it in the past, you have to try it out. You would have to make games with both engines to see which one you like the most. That is how professionals do it. They don't just pick one engine randomly based on its features. They first try it out, see if it works for their games, and if it does, they stick with it. Godot has its own scripting language. It's called GDScript. It's very simple. It looks a bit like Python. Because it's a special language, it's designed to be simple and designed for the needs of game developers. You have built-in types for vectors, for matrix 3-2, colors, everything you'd need to manage transforms, positions, etc. in your game. It gets better in every release. There's not been a single release of the engine where they didn't add anything to GDScript. It's not statically typed, but in future versions of the engine, the devs are planning to add optional static typing, but also just-in-time compilation for better performances. It offers a tool mode. You can run any code you write inside the editor by writing the tool keyword at the top, which allows you to create tools like you can see on the right. You can draw trajectories, but also animate sprites in the editor, etc. And last but not least, it offers a plugin API as well to create import, export tools and go a bit further with editor customization. That's how GDScript looks and if, and if you are a Python developer, it will look quite similar, although you don't have all the functionality you'd find in Python. But if you want to learn more, I have a tutorial on GDScript, you'll find it in the description. Let's talk about Godot's strengths in general. For one, it has a very flexible scene system. You don't have prefabs, you create everything as a scene, and a scene is a hierarchy of nodes. The nodes cover all your basic needs. There are sprites, colliders, there are UI elements, there's a complete UI library. You can break down your scenes as much as you want. A scene could be a character, it could just be a sign with which you can interact, and then you can combine them the way you want in a level, 
You can inherit from scenes, so you can create a variation of a character, but retain all the properties of its parent scene. You can then combine those scenes however you want to create the final game. There's a complete animation system that allows you to animate everything. You can key any value. You have access to a dope sheet right now, and by the end of the year, there should be also a full graph editor with Bezier curves. I've mentioned the complete UI library. There's a built-in system to create complex UI, and all the editor UI is based on it as well. So it gives you an idea of the potential. This UI system works well for games, but also for tools you might want to make for your games. Godot has a simplified shader language. That's a subset of GLSL. The shader system takes a lot of work away from you. It will optimize and create the variations of the shader you need based on what you put inside of it, if you use transparency or not, for example. I've mentioned all the file formats are version control friendly. For the most part, they are plain text. Last but not least, you have a built-in asset library that's entirely open source. Let's us now spice things up with Godot 3. It's coming this summer, probably around August, and fasten your seatbelts because there's a lot to cover. Starting with GD Native, a system to bind any code from external libraries using the editor. You don't have to recompile the engine. You can use C, C++, and pretty much anything you'd like as long as there are bindings for it. There are Rust and D bindings in the making right now. There's C Sharp support, C Sharp 7, the latest version of Mono, and Visual Script as well. You can see on the right, it's a visual scripting system that's available on top of GD Script. When you have a designer or someone else in your team that's not a developer, but who needs to create some kind of script. The engine score has been rewritten, has been refactored in depth. This should lead to better performances. The developers also took the opportunity to make breaking changes to the syntax. So now instead of using access functions for many values, you can access them directly. You could access the position of a node directly instead of using the get and set pose functions, for example. The import system has been rewritten as well to work more like Unity, where you have automatic import of assets. There's a completely new audio engine with a mixer and audio effects that's getting even better in future versions. There's a robust export system as well where you can create templates now, for example, to export a demo version and maybe a complete version of your game. There's a new high level networking API that's coming up and the shader language has been upgraded to support most of the features in OpenGL ES3 but it keeps the features it had before to make your job easier when you make the game. There's also VR support powered by the OpenVR. It's the Steam API for Steam VR. Right now it supports the HTC Vive, but also a few more devices. And so, yeah, you can make VR games with Godot 3. There's a new UI design for the editor that took a lot of work that scales better. It's vector-based. It's less cluttered than before and it's customizable. You can change the color. You can also change the contrast and brightness of the editor colors. It comes with tons of small changes to make your life easier working in Godot. Now here's the deal. Godot 3 also comes with a new modern 3D rendering engine. It features the physically based rendering workflow you'd expect with a rich default material, forward clustered rendering, it has built-in post-process effects that are kind of hard-coded, but that should offer excellent performances, and it features multi-sample anti-aliasing as well. You get GPU-based particles with a new way to animate them using curves. It's about as fast as it gets. You can use tons of particles like in other modern game engines. The base particles are meshes, so you can spawn anything, you can emit from a mesh's normals as well, and you get a new particle shader system for even more advanced effects. The new engine supports real-time global illumination. It works similar to light probes. Every static mesh can contribute to lighting. Emissive materials also emit light. All lights are dynamic, and it's optimized to run on low-end desktop devices and high-end mobile ones. 
Now the current system is optimized for indoor lighting. It should work on mid-sized environments, but it will still not work too well for terrains. In the future though, Juan said that it should be possible to extend the system to work better in outdoor settings. Here's another example where you can see how it works in real time. You have emissive materials emitting light on the left and on the right side a dynamic light moving around the scene. The PBR shader is designed to be compatible with Blender 2.8 EV rendering engine. You have a comparison of the two on screen and moving forward the goal is to allow Blender users to export their materials to Godot more efficiently. As I told you, emissive materials can act as lights. Here's an example with the glow effect on top of that and screen reflection. And thanks to global illumination with a single directional light source, you can get scenes like this one. There's more coming next in Godot 3.1. So 3.0 is coming out this summer. 3.1 is planned for the end of 2017. It will bring improvements to the 2D game engine with real skeletons and mesh deformation for the animation system, Bezier curves for the animation tools as well, meaning you'll get a graph editor. There's going to be more work on the 3D engine with the addition of decals, volumetric lighting support, the ability for particles to collide with the world. Um, Godot 3 breaks compatibility with GLES 2, which is required if you want your games to run on old Android devices, basically phones that are still running Android 4 or less. It's going to be mostly for 2D though, as the new 3D engine requires more advanced GLES features. The audio engine will be extended to support reactive music. This is a system used by sound designers to make the audio react to the game world. It's similar to what WISE does, if you know the tool. And there's even more coming next, but that will be for another video. All the new features in Godot 3 have been developed in only a year. That's really not a lot for an open source project, but for a game engine in general. There are dozens of active contributors right now, and the count is rising over time. So I invite you to keep an eye out for the engine, and you should really try it out for your next game jam or something like that. That said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more game creation tutorials.